Hey everybody! A few uh, last week, sometime, I showed you a new uh, radio that I picked up for my uh, mobile solar Aries response kit. So I decided I'm going to do something with the old radio, and this is the antenna that I'm going to be using. And I'm going to put it together for you right here, and we're going to mount it up and test it out. So when I come back, we're going to take a look at the DBJ-1 ham antenna. All right, thanks for joining me back here today. Uh, I'm going to put this antenna together for you and show you how simple it is to do. Um, I am not building this antenna. It is actually a built antenna. And what you're seeing here is the actual antenna. And it's made by Ed Fong, WB6IQN. And it's something you can order. Um, you can buy these off eBay. They're in the range of, I think, $36, $35, I forget. But that's pretty close. Actually, wait, hold on, I have the receipt. $39 with shipping for a dual band ham radio antenna that's going to look like this is when it's finished and work very, very well. That's a really good price. Now, I looked at setting up my uh, other rig, and I'm going to take you over there in a second. I looked at setting up my other rig with um, a more expensive antenna, but I didn't really want to spend another $100 on, you know, another uh, Hustler or whatever else I was going to buy this dual band antenna. And I figured it's a 10 watt rig, you know, if for some reason it croaks, eh, no big deal, I'll buy another 10 watt rig, you know, or I'll stick an HT up there. The other rig that I did, the uh, Anytone, that's packed in my kit now and ready for emergencies after I programmed it, and I showed you that one last week. So this is the heart of the antenna, this is what you'll get, and I forgot to mention, you notice this thing's here, this is some PVC tubing, we'll get into that later. This is what you get when you order the antenna. You get a cap and a base, and this is the actual antenna in here. Now I'm going to read you, because it's a dual band, I'm going to read you the information on it. So those of us that are into this kind of stuff can understand it. The rest of you, if you want to fast forward and see me putting it together and putting it up, that's cool. <laughs> but basically this is a 50 ohm feed impedance. No ground radials are needed. It's 5 feet long. The antenna feed point is 10 inches above the connector, so U-clamps, hose clamps, and everything else can be used. So if you're clamping it, let's say, down at the bottom of the antenna, let's say this is the bottom, you got about 11 inches here to put hose clamps and stuff, and it won't affect the SWR, it won't affect your antenna at all, because it's a non-radiating section. And I believe that's this section here, that's that wire. So you're safe to use hose clamps and stuff. Uh, it's a half wave on uh, UHF. Half wave on VHF, maximum power on at 75 watts. He does offer a 250 watt version if you want to pay a little more for it. Um, for my purposes here, the most I'd ever use on this is a mobile rig at 50 watts. So really no big deal. 2.1 dBi gain on both 2 meters and 4. So each of these antennas are um, tuned to whatever you want them to be. He offers different ham bands. You can get one for 220. You can get them for business band radios and the 151 point whatever frequency range. Um, he pretty much offers a wide array of um, different types of antennas. And I'm going to put his link down below, down in the comments, and you can go there and check it out. Now the biggest part of doing this antenna, okay, obviously there's no building to be done. And actually his students, he teaches at a uh, university, so his students build these for class projects. And the money he gets goes back into teaching them how to do more work like this. So you're definitely supporting him and supporting his students when you do that. So anyway, the simple part of this, but can be complicated to some, is getting the right PVC pipe. Now if you've noticed, I took some uh, stuff on here and I took off all the, the labeling on it. But when you go shopping for this, you want to get the right size. I'm going to back the camera up a little bit. You're going to see how thin the walls are on this. Much thinner than regular Schedule 40 PVC piping, okay? What he tells you to get is 3 quarter inch, 200 PSI PVC pipe. The antenna is adjusted to use this particular width so that anything thicker, it won't radiate as well. So you definitely want to make sure you get the right stuff. Now, I walked into my Lowe's, I walked into the PVC aisle, boom, it was right there, no problem. So this isn't something hard to get. He also sends you in the instructions where you'll be able to get it. Uh, at Menards, he gives you the SKU number. Right there. At Lowe's, he gives you the item number. So, you can find this very, very simply. The reason he ships it like this 
is because it saves him shipping cost. He can throw this in an envelope. You add this on you know, at five feet, you're adding some cost. And he will send you one if you can't find it locally. If you can't find it at all, he'll ship you one for an extra price, you know. So anyway, we're going to get together, we're going to get uh, into how we actually put this together. But I'm going to show you the other area where I set up first and show you why we're building this antenna, so hang on. All right, in the center there, this is the uh, shelf I put up. Well, basically, give me a little bit you see up here. And please excuse the shaky camera work. Um, up there is all the stuff that used to be on my desk. So I have a little more room for displaying products and stuff when I'm doing reviews. The radio you see mounted there is one that I did a review on, God, was it last year or the year before? It's been a while. I've used it quite a bit. Um, it is the Lyxon VV898. It's a 10 watt. I believe it's 5 and 10 watts. And I have it mounted up there. And as you can tell, i got the wires going down behind all my chopping gear. And they go outside my garage door there at the bottom and out to the outside. We'll show you what it's like when it's all mounted up out there. Um, i got to mount it first. But anyway, that's why I'm doing this. That's what the radio is going to go on. So let's get back to the table and I'll show you how to build right, the antenna. I, I keep saying build the antenna and I keep kind of laughing because you're not really building this antenna. It's been built for you. You're assembling it. So... First thing you're going to do, and the first rule of this antenna is glue nothing on. Do not use any kind of glue on this. Put it together, the pieces will fit perfectly if you use the right PVC. You won't need glue. If you glue it, um, he offers an incredible warranty with this. I mean, anything goes wrong, you ship it back to him, he'll ship you a new one or fix it. But if you glue it, he's not going to warranty it. And it's a pain in the neck. If you've got to get in there and fix something, you know, now you've got to break the PVC pipe, get a new one. So the first rule, just stick the stuff on. You're going to put the end cap on. Give it a good tight tug like that. And that's on there good. Flip this around. These are times where I wish I had a wider cam camera uh, lens. <laughs> so you're just going to feed this into the antenna. No insulation, no need to anchor it on top. It will go in there perfectly. So what I do is I've kind of straightened this out a little bit. When it came to me in the mail, it was wound up much tighter. But you can kind of... You know, as long as you're not too, too rough on it, this cable's pretty strong. You can kind of give it a, a little tug straight, make sure everything's nice and straight. But it will stay up there. It will hold itself up there in the top of the thing. And you're just going to feed it in, just like this. Just feed it in carefully. Oops, get in there. There you go. All the way in, no need to insulate anything. Now I will tell you that I sprayed a little clear coat on both this and the connectors in here just because I didn't want anything to rust or get crummy. But clear coat is non-conductive, so it won't radiate, it won't mess anything up. If you're thinking about painting this antenna, which you can do, use plastic paints for it, like that Krylon pad plastic stuff. Any kind of paint with any kind of metallic in it will affect the performance of the antenna. Any kind of metallic particles is what I meant to say. So if you paint this with, and believe it or not, let me show you a paint. See this stuff from Walmart? This has, I forget what it is. But he'll tell you on the, if you look up painting antennas on, the, on any website, they'll tell you, I think it's ferric something or other. But it is a ferrous metal that's in this paint. You can't use it for that. Now, yeah, it'd probably work, it'd probably be fine, but you know, why risk it? So what I've done is I just put clear coat on it. I sprayed it down with a little clear coat. Um, let me show you that. This I checked and I know for a fact has no metals in it. And that's it, just a matte clear enamel, just to keep it from falling apart or getting too much UV exposure. Now, that's the end of building the antenna. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on a mast and I'm gonna put it outside and uh, put it up and we're gonna test the SWR because one of my friends was nice enough to lend me his SWR meter and uh, test out the performance of it. And I'll show you what it looks like outside. So when we come back, it's gonna be up and mounted and I'll show you where I go from there. All right, I got it set up out here. There's the top. I would say it's about 15 feet up. Again, it doesn't need to be super high. This is just for a smaller radio in my garage so I can hit repeaters. I have it wires run down through there. And around that wall is my garage there, and that's the solar batteries for the backup, solar panels. So let's go inside and test it out. All right, I got an SWR and power meter ahead of me. Um, I have it on 14658, that's two meters. We're gonna key it up. Let me get this out of here. 
And as you can tell, we're getting 10 watts. And the SWR meter is barely moving. I guess maybe that's a 1 to 2. Not really that bad. Let's move it to the 30 watt range and we're way up on 10 watts with a... Can you read that, folks? Sorry, I'm not as steady doing this with my other hand. 1.2. So that's about the middle of the band. And that's pretty darn good. I am pretty pleased with it. Now, we're going to talk about the purpose of this. Again, this is a 10 watt radio up here, okay? For something like this, with a mobile installation, excellent choice of antenna. Would I go out and buy a high-end 50 watt rig and use this radio? No. But, I mean this antenna. No, I wouldn't. But, um, would I use it with a Baofeng? If all I could afford was a Baofeng and I needed an indoor antenna? Absolutely. Let me tell you. This is exactly what this antenna is made for. You have an HT, you have it at home. Maybe you're not able to uh, put up a full-time antenna. You know, something like this you could stick in the backyard. You know, in your backyard or out on your patio and disguise it maybe. And even get away with having an outdoor antenna where you're not supposed to. So that is really where this antenna shines. I'm pretty pleased with it. And again, we'll get back and I'll tell you more info on it in a second. So this is my review of the dual band DBJ-1. It is an Ed Fong antenna. You can check them out at the website. I will put the website below. Very affordable way to get a decent outdoor antenna for whatever radio you're looking to use. And uh, I'll give you more info on this radio as we use it. I've used it for a couple events, but never over a long period of time, like maybe a couple hours. So this is going to be on out here pretty much all the time. And it is connected, if you'll excuse my shaky cam work. I did a re review, uh, not a review, I built this box. And I showed you what it was like. This is my portable ham radio go bag. And that's all my gear in the corner, all my antennas and stuff ready to go. And that's where the Anytone radio is in, in there. So that's going to be my uh, mobile rig for out in the garage. Anyway, thanks for coming along. I am really happy with this antenna so far. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.